Why is it do we age? Is there an exact single reason as to why humans age? There are now dozens of theories of aging to explain this inevitable fact of being human. In this video, particularly, we'll be explaining about the biological theories in random events. These theories all attempt to explain aging in terms of cellular and molecular changes. The first theory is wear and tear theory. It proposes that the human body wears out due to use and time. Parts of the body, such as cell and tissue, eventually wear out from the repeated use, thus killing the parts and then the whole body. Other than the repeated use of body and natural aging, wear and tear damage also can occur because of exposure to radiation, toxins and UV light, effect of the body's own functioning such as uncontrolled oxidative stress, free radical produced during when the body metabolizes oxygen, and lastly because of irreparable cellular systems such as nerve cells in the brain. As effects of aging which are caused by progressive damage to cells and body systems are not easily treated, these kind of strategies are the best way to be done so that the elderly can age healthily. The first strategy is to be aware of stresses and the emotional or physical reactions of the body. By understanding more about stress itself and determining how the body responds to the stress and find solutions. The other strategy is to lead a healthy and positive lifestyle. By doing activities such as exercises or physical activities, eat well-balanced nutritious meals, avoid nicotine, excessive caffeine and other stimulants, and also get enough sleep. Next is the rate of living theory. This theory explains that each animal or cells has a specific amount of metabolic energy available to it, and the rate at which this energy is used determines the length of life. The factors that were believed to control the length of life are metabolic potential and the rate of metabolism. According to Sohal, 1986, organisms with a higher metabolic rate may actually live longer than those with a lower metabolic rate. So what are the ways to boost your metabolism? First is to drink, drink and drink. It can temporarily speed up your metabolism. Second is to stand up more. If we do work in a standing up position in the afternoon, it can burn an extra 174 calories. Next is to have sufficient sleep because sleep deprivation affects on metabolism. And lastly, to lift heavy things because lifting activity can help to fight the drop in metabolism that can occur during weight loss. Next is cross-linking theory. According to this theory, it is an accumulation of cross-linked proteins that damages cells and tissues, slowing down bodily processes resulting in aging. It is also in which certain proteins in human cells interact randomly and produce molecules that get linked in such a way as to make the body stiffer. Cross-linking, which is the binding of glucose to protein, can cause replicative damage or an age-related decline in protein turnover that can be linked to the loss of functional proteins, further promoting age-associated pathologies. Examples of when cross-linking theory applies are cataracts, which are the stiffening of the eye senses, wrinkles and other age-related skin changes that was found to be because of the cross-linking of skin protein collagen, atherosclerosis, in which researchers believe are the cross-linking of protein of the walls of the arteries, and among other conditions, hardening of the arteries that increases the risk for a heart attack and stroke. While you can't stop cross-linking, you can slow it down. Researchers believe that if the concentration of sugar in the blood is high, then more cross-linking occurs. So what can you do is by keeping your blood sugar from spiking. Avoid foods with high glycemic index such as sugary sodas and juices because they release sugar into the body quickly. Next is free radical theory. Have you heard about free radicals? Did you know there is a theory about free radicals in aging? Research shows that free radical theory invokes macromolecular damage caused by oxygen-derived free radicals such as reactive oxygen species ROS, and reactive nitrogen species RNS. This theory proposes that accumulation of oxidative damage causes functional deterioration associated with aging. Eventually, these damages will lead to suppression of the antioxidative defense system and accumulation of lipid peroxidation products. Both of these are responsible for redox signaling. 
Originally, this theory describes that reactive oxygen species are irrelevant in certain situations such as anaerobic growth. The oxidative damage caused by them represents only a subtotal of damage. However, when it accumulates, it gives rise to accumulation of waste products. This will be explained further in accumulative waste theory. Nowadays, this theory has evolved further and gave rise to a few new theories that are more complex, like modified free radical theory. One of them is redox stress theory. It explains that there are hormetic effects for free radical theory. For mild radical effects, it will trigger reversible molecular stress, thus increasing longevity. While the severe radical effects will trigger the irreversible molecular damage that will decrease longevity. However, there are a few ways to slow the damage. They are by eating more foods containing antioxidants and cutting calorie intakes to reduce the redox signaling occurrence. Continuing from free radical theory is accumulative waste theory. It proposes that molecules damaged by oxidation, byproducts, and damaged mitochondria accumulates in non-dividing cells, causing dysfunction, toxicity, aging, and cell death. The mechanisms of waste accumulation explains how this type of damage affects cells. First, it will change the structural organization of the cell. Thus, the cellular component will be displaced, causing cellular functions and metabolic functions to be impeded. Next, the accumulation of waste materials within the cell will worsen the damage secondary to their toxicity. Lastly, the non-dividing cells are more susceptible than the dividing cell towards this type of damage because of their inability to undergo mitosis. However, there is a mechanism for damage repair. Even though it cannot stop the process, it is able to slow down aging. The mechanism is called autophagy. It leads the cellular organelles and proteins within the cell to be broken down and recycled for making new organelles and proteins. Increasing autophagy can be done by doing intermittent fasting, exercise and taking certain drugs and supplements. Next, we move on to autoimmune theory. It is a theory that proposes that the decrease in immune function may enhance the autoimmune response, causing the body to produce antibodies that attacks itself. So, how does this happen? It is because as the immune system ages, it becomes harder for the body cells to distinguish themselves from foreign cells. But why does this happen? As we age, immune system remodeling occurs continuously in our body. During this, there is a reduction in immune response, increase in inflammatory and oxidation background, and production and release of autoantibodies. To slow down or cope with the autoimmune disease, one must have a good sleep hygiene, eat a healthy diet, exercise regularly, Practice managing stress as it can lead to inflammation. And lastly, acknowledge what is your disease and what triggers it. To conclude the autoimmune theory, infectious diseases are more prevalent among the elderly. When compared to younger counterparts, the elderly are more frequently present with respiratory and urinary tract infections. And those patients usually have a worse prognosis, a research done by Chun Ha et al. 2020. Next, we move on to error theory. It proposes that aging is the result of accumulation of errors in cellular molecules that occurs during translation and transcription of DNA in a human's body. As these errors have occurred in the process of the protein synthesis, the cellular molecules involved cannot function like usual. Then, it will cause cellular breakdowns, deterioration, and eventually death in the host. How exactly does the error theory occur? It occurs when the structure of the DNA is altered as people age, and due to the alterations, the DNA cannot read correctly, which will then result in the malfunction of transcription and translation, which might result in aging or illness or cancer directly or indirectly. Of course, there are ways to treat or fix DNA alterations by using gene therapy technique. The first technique is gene augmentation therapy, which is to stop a gene from producing a functioning product. Secondly is gene inhibition therapy, is to inhibit and interfere the expression of another gene. And third is scaling of specific cells, which is aimed to insert DNA into a diseased cell that causes the selected cell to die. 
The last theory is the order to disorder theory, or in other words, law of entropy. So what is entropy and what is law of entropy? Entropy measures the disorder or randomness in a system, such as our body. While the law of entropy is a system involving spontaneous processes is left to itself, it automatically worsens with time until the state of disorder reaches a maximum or in human we call death. Kittel 1969 mentioned that entropy increases as the number of cells and the total energy within the body increase. These are the relationships of entropy to the characteristics of spontaneous physical system which are energy, decay, deteriorates, particles, complexity, time, random activities, and system entropy. So what are the ways to reduce body decay? First is physical, by developing routine of aerobic and muscle, using building exercises as needed. Next is mental, the brain needs to be stimulated and stressed on a regular basis. Next is nutritional, to minimize food intake and to select food of low caloric value. And lastly, relaxation is to allow to remove entropy created during normal day activities. In conclusion, most people will live to experience aging. It is normal as age-related deterioration is affecting an ever-growing number of people. Although the process is unavoidable, it is important to understand the process of biological aging. By understanding so, we might be able to positively influence aspects of maintaining better health and wellness as we grow older.